we are remembering what Jesus did for us. Had he not gone through what he went through, we would not have finished thing to say, any story to say. Amen. All right. Today's message is, it is I. Hallelujah. It is I. And in some other translation, he s- it says, I am. Hallelujah. And this is in a quotation. This is the saying of Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, it is I. Amen. And our test memory verse for today is in uh, Matthew 14, 28. Shall we please say it together? Matthew 14, 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, Command me to come to you on the water. Let's say it one more time, please. Matthew 14, 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Hallelujah. This is what, when Jesus answered, it is I, then Peter also answered to him. And this morning, we are going to tell some stories. Amen. Let's read our text, main text, Matthew 14, 22 to 36. It says, immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he has sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch on on the night, Uh, In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him, all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Amen. We have a lengthy reading, right? Yes. Today we are going to tell the story. Tell someone, tell the story. Hallelujah. Tell, Tell another one. Tell the look at someone else. 
and God tell the story. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we have a, a story to tell. Amen. And this morning, that is all we're going to do. We're going to tell a story. Um, around six, around, yeah, almost getting to six, um, I was just lying down, and the Lord, I, he opened my eyes, and there were a lot of people behind the building coming in, waiting to come in. And I saw there were certain people that I saw. And also, some of them were in white appeal. Some of them were in mourning appeal. Some of them were in their job, I mean, uniform. And they were all behind. And they were coming inside, but the door was locked. And it wasn't time yet. So I was like, hey, how, I mean, who's going to open the door? Even if we open the door, who's going to? Uh, be in here for them. And I was trying to call Mr. Nsinia. And I said, Mr. Nsinia of all is late. And then I look at the time and I said, no, he's not late. They have already, they have rather come early. So, you know, and yes, and then I, I just came out of it. And the Lord just spoke to me about that. And I'm like, oh, okay, hallelujah. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Amen. So, where do I start from? Tell the story. You know, Jesus, as we all know, this week, um, this month, and this uh, occasion, we are talking about the power from high. The power from the most high God. And Pastor Mary explained to us that it is the power that caused Mary to conceive. Hallelujah. He said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. And then after, once the Holy Ghost overshadow you, the power will come. Hallelujah. So we've been talking about the power, the power, and we are so, and so he said, that holy thing, or that holy person that will be born will be called the Son of God. And the Son of God means God in human form. Hallelujah. All right. So when Jesus was born, I mean, these things was, the story was of uh, the angels brought the message to Mary. And Mary communicated to Joseph, her fiancé, but Joseph didn't believe it that much. And Joseph even doubted it because something of that sort have never happened. So, you know. And an angel of the Lord confirmed it to Joseph in Joseph's dream. And Joseph believed it. Hallelujah. And ran with it. So, that holy child, the son of God has come. And Bible said he was baptized. He grew, he was baptized. And then he has to start his ministry. He has to tell his own story. Hallelujah. It wasn't the story of his mom. It wasn't the story of Mo Joseph. It wasn't the story of anybody but his own story. So he has to begin with his own story. And this portion of the Bible is there for the story of the Messiah. Hallelujah. It was only the Messiah, <clears throat> the Messiah, it was only the Messiah who is to read this, this the Messiah story. And then the people of Israel were expecting the Messiah to come down from heaven and come and, and what? Conclude to the earth. So it's like they will see him coming down. They were not expecting that he will be born. Hallelujah. Because the Messiah is the <clears throat> mighty one of God. So he must come down. So when Jesus came and Jesus went to, after he went to the wilderness, he came after 40 days. Then he went to his hometown, Nazareth. And he went to the synagogue, the temple. And they gave him the scripture to read. And he opened his own story. 
Hallelujah. And this is his story. He says, Luke 4, 18 and 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, can you, can we say it together? Because that's our mission statement. Let's say it together. Please go. Luke 4, 18 and 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when Jesus read his story, the people of Nazareth did not believe him. And they said, isn't this Joseph's son, isn't his mother, his sisters and brothers here with us? So if this is your story, your father Joseph died. Hallelujah. And you couldn't do anything. So they doubted him. But their doubting did not take Jesus out from that story. Because that is him. This morning, you also have a story. You have a story to tell. And when we talk about the spirit of the Lord upon you, power from most high, power from most high, the power is going to turn your story around. Hallelujah. Most of the time we sing this, he, make, he takes my sorrow and give me victory and give me fame, and, but we don't want to talk about our shame. But the shame, when the power of God comes upon it, it turns into fame. Hallelujah. So until you stand and declare to yourself that I have a story and I'm going to tell my story, your story will still be a shame, a disgrace to you. But as soon as you said, I'm going to tell that story, that power turns that story into fame and into greatness. So we are waiting for greatness. You're waiting for greatness. The greatness is in you. Hallelujah. When you begin to tell your story, that is where your greatness begins. Amen. And so Jesus told his story. <coughs> we are still on the storytelling. So, and we know this is our mission statement, right? And I'm going to tell a story. Two weeks ago, after we left it, the day we had Miss Gloria's birthday party, we stayed here because we have to clean here, and then we have to run our mouth too, right? Those of us who stay late, we run our mouth. We, run. we told stories, right? Hallelujah. And so I went home late. There was someone that, um, had to, to I sent him the invitation for funeral, and he responded so I want to come, and he did not come. But I couldn't follow up with him. So one week after the funeral, he texted me a program. And so I forgot about it. So when I went home, I was like, oh, no. I was thinking the program was the end of the month, of, of March. So I was like, oh, it shouldn't be like he didn't come to my program, so I didn't also go to his program. So let me just I mean, find out the date and call him and then talk. So whilst I was calling my phone, I had a message. And the message called that person's name. And the message said he's dead. And I was like, so you know when you are looking at the candle, you push it away. So I push it away. And then the word dead struck me. And I was like, ah, let me visit that message again. Because I was on that person's profile. So I visited the message, I visited the message, and I was like, oh no, it's not true. And I said, hold on, let me, let me check. So I called that person. And so when I called, his wife picked the phone. 
He said, mercy, it is true. And I said, what is true? He said, yeah, he died last night. I was like, what? And then, so it was true, he's dead. So, and then I came to realize that he will be buried the very day my father was to be buried. So I was like, hmm, there is something cooking here. And let me find from, from the great one. Hallelujah. What is it? That this thing has happened at the same time. Because I will never forget that date in my life. So when any time I want to remember that date in my life, I got to remember him too. Then God said, what is the story? I said, oh, okay. I want to tell you the story. When we came here, we came, myself, uh, pastor, his wife, and me. We were three, came together. And we didn't have anybody here to receive us. So it was tossing back and forth. And this person received us. He's not a Ghanaian. He received us. It wasn't easy for him because these people that we know here, they don't like that Miss Miss thing. And even if it's Miss Miss, not just one person, three people, they don't get on key. So, but the man was too close. He was like, he goes through, he, he, he takes all blame upon himself and still makes sure we are comfortable somehow. Even though we were not comfortable, but he made an effort. He learned how to eat fufu, benku, mutuo, jollof rice, because where I was, we had to stay somewhere, and then pastor and his wife stay with them. And if we say Dumfries, he brought us to Dumfries. Hallelujah. Because his house was then across over there. So he caused our foot to step here in Dumfries. Storytelling. Amen. So, we will have to cook from my place and bring it to his place and clean and everything. And it was that back and forth. And he introduced us to his church. So, we were fellowshipping in his church also, like friends. And we had another Ghanaian church that we fellowship. But we never stopped telling our story. Why we came all here, not that one should come and then establish and bring someone, but we all came. And our story is we are missionaries. God has sent us. And this Hebrew, no, not this, please, let's go back to uh, Luke. And Luke 4, 18 and 19 was our message. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. And I remember one, uh, one time he said, how can you African come in here to preach to us? And then we said, okay, you might be in, in America, but in the Lord, you might be behind us. So we were just briefing him, and then he will ask questions, and then we answer, and that was how our fellowship was. And then we had to, we have, we're fine with, the, uh, with his head pastor. So, and they told us that they have a vision to go to Africa. They've been praying. So, are we being there? Is God answering their prayer as to which part of Africa to go? So, they resorted they will go to Ghana. Hallelujah. And in course of that, the main motive was made known. You can't hide anything from God. So in course of to cut the story short, because some of them are personal thing that you, I can open it up. That pastor and his wife, not this one that died, but the head pastor and his wife had to divorce. Because the head pastor is going to Ghana, is going for the gold in Ghana. 
not for the ministry. He's going to dig gold because there is gold in Ghana. So they have to separate. And now that church is no more. But this one has the desire to be of a help, I mean, a, 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 an, an asset to the kingdom. So he, n- he didn't have a child because his wife would not. He said, you don't have enough to take care of me and a baby. So if you work enough to get more money, then we'll think of having baby. So he was doing the best he could, but it wasn't sufficient. To cut the story short, he said, no, I can't do that. I have to follow my calling. So that marriage has to also be separated. And he suffered the loss. Honestly, it wasn't pleasant. But he insisted that if I can go through this and serve God and do what God has laid on my heart, I prefer to do that. So he went through ridicule, honestly, until he was in and God opened the door for him to remarry. Hallelujah. And he wanted to go to Ghana so bad. He said he wanted to go and introduce himself to my father to let him know that. He's also part of his children. And he will prefer to stay in Ghana. And then we will be here in Africa. So that whatever we couldn't do in Ghana, he will be there to do it. But he couldn't go there because of what his head pastor is doing back there. He thought it wouldn't be pleasant. But he still he had an orphanage in Africa. Hallelujah. Not in West Africa. He went to the other side of Africa. And he had an orphanage there. Uh, which he goes every year to take care of them. So personally, he did not have his own children personally. But he had children, orphans that he supported. And so when he died, he died as a, you know, he he died on Sunday. He was buried on Saturday. So I was just trying to make this point connected. Each of them have a story to tell. And I like the story of this man of God. That when one of I was talking to the wife and was telling me how it happened. The wife was like, it's like a dream to me. He had his message prepared to preach on Sunday. So within the night, hallelujah, he just, he said, there is no need to just wait. I mean, just buried him and he's gone through to be a story to tell. Hallelujah. And thank God that this mission, we did not close our mouth. It was the mission statement, our mission in United States that encouraged him to stand. And if I tell you what he went through, you wouldn't, I wouldn't. But he went through all the ridicule. But at the end of the day, I know that his soul is resting in peace. Amen. A story to tell. Hallelujah. We all have a story to tell. Let's talk about Jesus' story that he told, what happened, what we read about in Matthew 14 20 from 22. You know, when you read from uh, Matthew 14 from verse 1, Bible says that Jesus, when he was doing one mighty work, and his disciples, he sent them to go. And the disciples, the ordinary men, were healing the sick. They were because he 
impacted into them and commissioned them to go and work and bring results. So they went and mighty things were being done. And Bible said Herod heard of Jesus. And Herod said, this is no other than John the Baptist. I beheaded him, but I know and I believe he has resurrected. That is why all these things are being done by him. Praise the Lord. Even the heathen knows that there is a power that surpasses all powers. And when this power is manifesting, it is not by any other means, but the orchestration of God Almighty. Amen. So while Jesus, uh, Herod was saying that, and Jesus also remember his cousin, John the Baptist, the way he was killed. Bible said he separated himself with his disciples to go to a cool place. You know, when you are mourning, sometimes you don't want to be among people. That was how it happened. But Bible said where Jesus was going to have his quiet time, the multitude figured it out. Hallelujah. They figured it out. They know he took the right path and he exit on this. This path is leading to that. So they figured it out. And they were able to go and meet him. Bible said a lot of people. And that was where he fed them with five loaves of bread and two fishes. Bible said he was breaking it and breaking, breaking. He said 5,000 men beside women and children. Now let's see if there is a gathering. Let's have a picture about our small gathering. How many men? Hallelujah. How many women and how many children? So you see, if we say four men, Jesus fed with, uh, with uh, uh, fed five loaves of bread with five men. If we are cu counting the women and the children, you should know the number. He was just breaking it, breaking it. Hallelujah. He said, it is I. He was, who is he? I am the bread of life. So he was breaking the bread. Hallelujah. Giving himself, part of himself, was just breaking it. That is a story. No one comes to me and be hungry. Come to me if you are hungry and I will give you to, I will feed you. I will make sure you are satisfied. He was just breaking. It was not just a bread. Hallelujah. But he says, I am the bread of life, and I am the living water. So when I give you bread, you must be assured that there is water to quench your thirst. Hallelujah. And that brings satisfaction. That was Jesus' story. So he was just breaking to the people. And Bible said, after feeding them all, he constrained his disciples. Another version say he commanded his disciples. Another version say he made them. Made them is not that is not an optional. It's what a command to follow. He insisted, get into the boat and go to the other side of the sea, whilst I send this multitude away. Praise the Lord. So they have no option than to enter into the boat. And Bible said, Jesus sent those multitude away. And he went to a place, a secret place, a quiet place. He went there to pray. What is prayer? To have a communion communication with his father, with the one who has given him power, with the one who has sent him, with the one who has enabled him to feed these multitude with bread from above. He has to communion with him. So if Jesus saw it wise to have a communion with his father, then 
it is a lesson for us. So Bible said he was there waiting with his father throughout the evening. And he was still there and going to the dawn of the next day. Because at that time, it was between 3 and 6 a.m. So within that time. So now you see, the disciples were on the sea all this while. And Bible said they were not just on the sea, but the wind was contrary. They have difficulties. They have tough times. A journey that can take them two hours is taking them over seven hours. Hallelujah. All night. And you should know the caliber of people in the boat. They were fishermen, skillful ones. They understand the moves of the waves. Perhaps they saw the waves. So when Jesus said, get into the boat, perhaps they were about to tell, ah, it's not the right time. But Jesus made them. He constrained them. He commanded them. Get on. Hallelujah. Get on. In there. And so they followed. I'm telling the G Jesus' story. You have your own story. I want you to connect with your story. Things will not be favorable sometimes. But look at what Jesus is saying. Hallelujah. So on the sea. Now let me tell you uh, Peter's story. And maybe Judas is Carol's story. Because Judas is carrot, when you look at his character, he is someone who is that. He's that kind of person. I will speak my mind. Because, hallelujah. So his father, so is he. So you can imagine on the sea when the wind was contrary. I believe he might even question Peter. That Peter, are you sure what master is saying? You are a fisherman and you know this kind of weather and the sky and the way the sea is. Do you know? Why are you kwajomum? You can't say anything. Why don't you tell him? He has nothing. He, he doesn't know anything about fishing. He knows something about carpentry. So why don't you tell him? So at the middle of the sea, you can imagine. You can imagine. At that story. When you get to the middle of the journey and the journey is tough, what story do you tell? Blaming game. Hallelujah. It's not me, it's him, it's her. If we had done it this way, it wouldn't have been that way. If we had gone, it's on one or kind, on one or yeah. Mm, mm, uh, uh. Is that your story? Hallelujah. But in the midst of it all, I believe Peter was trying his best. Because now, blame is on me. Because I didn't tell the master. What is ahead? So, okay. I have life to protect. So, let me do my best. Bible said the wind was boisterous. There was storm. It was rain. The water was full. And the wind was contrary against their direction. Hallelujah. So, it wasn't easy. This journey is not easy. If I am to tell you our relationship with this man, man of God, who God has called him. If I am to tell you things that went through. You will say, are you people fools? Or is he a fool? So many things went on. But to God be the glory that what held us together was the story. Hallelujah. It was the story. So what is your story? 
What do you do when the going is tough? What do you do when the night is so thick? What do you do when you are being left alone? Everybody, everything is deserted you and the atmosphere is quiet on you. What do you do? Do you drift from it or you stand upon the word and try to persist and move on? Hallelujah. That was what happened. We don't talk about what happened on the sea. We talk about Peter walking on the water most of the time. But Jesus saw that he needed to go and rescue them. Amen. So he stopped everything to go to where they are. And this is the story. When they saw Jesus walking, what did they say? They said, he's what? A ghost. Why would they think he's a ghost? <laughs> Hallelujah. They didn't even only say he's a ghost because he was walking on the water. But he wasn't soaked. Hallelujah. Hair, his hair was not wet. His clothes wasn't wet. His shoes were not wet. He was walking as if there is no water, but it was raining. Hallelujah. So they say, as for this, it's going to be, it, it, it must be or someone, ghost. And that terrified them the more on, up on the top. Peter, you allow him to bring us here. And we are trying to survive. And now the go a ghost is coming towards us. So Bible said, as we read, look, um, Matthew 14, they were so much terrified. Yes, we have all, we, in our story, there is a point that we got terrified. We got so afraid. And we don't know that this life can be possible. It's like, I can't make it. Hallelujah. I remember when my father died and we were all trying to talk about it. He said something. Brother's story. And he was crying. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> Hallelujah. It was that, that, that incident was such that, but now we tell it as a story. So when he was remembered, it was the pain in it. And then he was. I said, <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And now we laugh at it. But the beautiful thing is that he made a decision at a point in time. And that decision saved him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, when that person was, ghost was walking towards them, one of them, one of the disciples said, it is the Lord. It's not a ghost, it's the Lord. And I believe that that disciple was John. He's always able to tell. Hallelujah. He's able to tell when they are confused. He's able to tell exactly about the master. Why? Because he was closer to him. So Peter said, oh. So when the ghost, when Jesus said, don't be afraid. It is I. Hallelujah. He said, first of all, be of good cheer. It is I. Don't be afraid. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, then command me. Hallelujah. Let it be a command for me to come. He said, come. And Bible said, Peter stepped on the water sea. He didn't get wet. He didn't drown. And he was just walking towards him. Hallelujah. He was just what? Walking towards him. Have you ever demonstrated metal and magnet? Hallelujah. 
As long as Peter was gazing Jesus, Jesus was then what has become a magnet. And Peter has become a metal. Hallelujah. He said, it is I. In your story, story that you would tell, your own story. Your story is different from my story. And your story is different from her story. And your story is different from his story. But in the telling of your story, if you will gaze at Jesus, he will pull you. Hallelujah. When you are demonstrating with kids about magnet and metal, you get a magnet and they do the metal. Oh, hey, hey, hey. come on. Oh. Yeah, they, 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 the way these children will be excited and someone say, it's a magic. Hallelujah. You can just hang it and then the metal will be following the magnet wherever you lead it. Amen. You got a story to tell. But in telling of your story, you got to gaze at him. And as you gaze at him, he becomes a metal, a, a magnet. And you, a metal. And he will direct you. Hallelujah. He will navigate you through it all and bring glory to himself so that your story of shame becomes a story of fame. Hallelujah. Tell a story. So brothers and sisters, anytime, anytime, whatever happened to us, I don't want you to forget. I want you to remember that it's a story building up. You are a writer. You are writing a book, a book that will be told, and all generations will know. Hallelujah. So you have a story to tell. And in your doings, in your decision, have it in your mind. Will you be ashamed when you are telling that story? That's the question you ask yourself. Amen. So... In the storytelling, if we want Jesus to be the magnet and us to be the metal, what is it that we need to do? Hallelujah. We got to wait for the power. We got to do what? Wait for the power. Waiting is a set time. You know, some story will not be well told if it is not in the right time. You have to let the story be matured. Hallelujah. You can't tell a half-baked story. You have to tell a full-baked story where you see the beginning and then you see the end of it. You can't say it in the, because in the middle, that is where all the roughness comes. Certain stories are not ready to be told. Hallelujah. Certain stories are ready. If, if this man of God were able to come to the funeral, I would have said something. Hallelujah. But now that thing that I would have said, now as is in me, I can say it. <laughs> Maybe someday. Let it be matured. Your story needs to be told. Let it be matured. Look for the right timing to tell your story. If it is not the right timing, keep quiet. It becomes annoying when you open your mouth. Have you ever experienced that before? When people see you, then they try to turn away because ah, he's coming to you. Ah, no, I can't stand it. Ah. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you wait and your story is matured, that is where people will begin to open their eyes and ears to listen. So we have to know the timing. 
of telling our story. Hallelujah. So in knowing the timing, you have to wait for him. Wait for his power. Because words are powerful. Words are spirit. Two weeks ago, a parent texted me on Tuesday that the child came to school and they had flu. He caught the flu in the school. I was going to reply. I said, this is, I won't even like what I want to do. I said, we tie the flu, and then every morning we, we unzip it and then spread it. That was the way. I said, oh, I didn't even comment about it. I should have rebuked in my way and stopped it. But I just opened it. And now the flu began to move everywhere. Words are powerful. Words are spirit. Words mature. They bear fruit. They perform. So what words are you taking in and what are you rejecting? Praise the Lord. Oh, this person had uh, uh, hernia and he died. Your great grandfather had hernia and he died. That other had it. And then, and, then, and then they pass it on. Now I have the hernia. And this thing go. And then the doctor said, that when I go to the doctor, they, they examine me. They don't know where it is, but I can feel it. And you are saying, that story doesn't build. Hallelujah. It destroys. It contaminates the children of God. That is why in telling of your story, you got to wait for his power. Amen. Amen. Wait for his red, uh, green light. And when he gives you the go ahead, your story becomes healing. Your story heals the broken hearted. Your story opens the eyes of the blind. Your stories set people free. Hallelujah. I, I'm talking to leaders. If you are here at the voice, uh, the, at the sound of my voice, I want you to know that you have an anointing so much to affect lives. So take it like you have come to a school to empower yourself and go out there lives. The message is your story. And you want to have your, your, your story to be effective, you got to wait for his power. You got to do what? Wait for his power. Amen. And what does Hebrew? That is the text that came to me. Hebrews 11 it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God, to please him. Mm -hmm. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Waiting. Waiting. Hallelujah. I remember when we were young, in the, when we were young before we got into the Lord, there are certain things that was so, uh, I was so, I, it, I was so, uh, it, it doesn't, it, it, I didn't get it. And I got so mad. Oh, we are going to wait before the Lord. Those SU people. Mr. Nsia, your group. We are going to wait before the Lord. Wait before the Lord. We are going for waiting. We are going, it was a, then it was a language. And some of us that didn't understand, we got so mad, and they were so holy, holy people. Oh, my head, those SU people. Holy, holy. Yeah, one waiting. You see? Bad. You were one of them, right? Okay, so Mr. and Mr. Tete. But you know what? It's one stronghold of our Christian life. That we have neglected. It was a good thing that they were doing in those days. 
But maybe they did not explain it to some of us to get it. That is why we did what we did. But glory be to God that we didn't stay in that city of destruction. You got to wait. Waiting. That's how we say it. Waiting before God. It is something that this generation will lack. Especially American Christians. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's not our fault. It's the system. Even if you want to wait, cry, you have nowhere to wait. Because when your children close from school and they come home, if you don't wake up and attend to them, they will pull the house down. So you don't have any place to wait. That you don't have. And it's not the fault of the children. Because these days, you can't let them go outside and play with their neighbors. No, you can't trust them. You see? So now it's very scared. When we talk about expensive thing to do, is the waiting. Hallelujah. And even with the cell phone, even if you have the time to wait, the cell phone will not give you time to wait. Epa, 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 epa. And then when epa, you watch and someone, let me just view. And then it distracts you. Waiting. Hallelujah. But to be able to tell your story effectively, you need that ingredient, waiting. Because you know what? Before Jesus, the son of God, before he was able to tell his story, he waited for 40 days and 40 nights. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. And the disciples, they also told their story. And before they were able to, to tell their story, Jesus said, go to Jerusalem, go and wait in the upper room for that, wait for that power. They waited for 10 days. We talk about Paul. Before Paul was commissioned to tell his story, he waited, Acts 13. They waited, they were prophets. And priests, they're gathering together, waiting before the Lord, praying and worshiping God. And then he said, separate unto me Saul and Barnabas. When you read the epistle, Paul didn't say anything. All his preaching was his story. I was a Pharisee. I'm, I'm from Be the tribe of Benjamin. I did this, I did that, I did, I did that. That was all his story. But that story was so empowered that the cripple walk. Hallelujah. So, your story will be as effective if you receive that power from the most high. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Spirit, the third uh, part of God. God, the Holy Spirit in you. But you need the power from God most high. Hallelujah. To make your story effective. Amen. Who wants to tell his story? Hallelujah. You want to tell your story? Do you have a story to tell? You really do? Hallelujah. Then get yourself ready to wait for that power. And brethren, that is the only thing that will give you reward before God. When he comes in his throne, he's going to reward you your story. Hallelujah. So in the purpose or, or process of waiting, 
You got to be purposeful. Hallelujah. You got to be what? Purposeful. Have a purpose. Have a reason. They decided 12 apostles went to the upper room in Jerusalem. They were not, they were, they don't, were not living in Jerusalem. They were from Galilee. They traveled to Jerusalem for the festivity. But Jesus said, go back to Jerusalem. Go and wait. Go to the upper room. Go and wait for the power. So they all went together as from Acts chapter 2. There were about 120 people, and they were all waiting together in the upper room. Jesus said, you will be anointed with Holy Ghost and fire. So when they got in there, in the upper room, they were there for a purpose. Hallelujah. If they were not mindful of what they were there for, they couldn't wait for 10 days. They have something to do. Waiting without purpose will amount to nothing. That is why Hebrews 11 says, He that comes to me must know that I am. You're going to wait for him to empower you to tell your story. Know that he is. He says, when you look for me, you will find me. Hallelujah. He has already made it clear. He is not a God to lie. He will never lie to you. Wait with a purpose. Amen. And then when you have a purpose, wait with an expectation. Hallelujah. With an expectation. You can't come to God without expecting something from him. Why do you come then? If you are self-sufficient, stay home. But we are not self-sufficient. We need something from him. When I come to church, I need a refill. Hallelujah. You can refill in the house. I don't like my house refill. No. Hallelujah. I want to be refilled here. Because he has said in his word, he said, a place where I will establish my name. And I can tell you, if I'm telling you the story of word performance, I can tell you and tell you and tell you that this is the place that God has purposed to establish his name. Hallelujah. Run to this house and you will be saved. Run here and you will be saved. Pastor Court said, the people you associate yourself with, you become them. He knows. Hallelujah. So I can't tell you something that I, didn't, I don't know. I can't tell you a multitude that I don't even know their source. But I can glorify God with them. But I can bet you, run here. Hallelujah. Whatever is chasing you out there, you just run in here. And come and sleep. Even in your sleep, he will work on you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So don't walk in here. Oh, because if I don't come, they will call me. And my Auntie Grace will make a real call. And call me and find out why. So let me come so she knows I'm here. No. Don't do that. Come with an expectation. Hallelujah. Come with an expectation and see his faithfulness. So we wait with the purpose. We wait with an expectation. And then what else? Hello? How? Oh. Waiting is to make a time. Waiting is what? Waiting is what? Do we make a time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know how I have you, right? Alexis' graduation, she has already made a time for it. Right? She made a time last year. And so you have no excuse. Hallelujah. 
The planners, I tell you, you got to plan it big time. Because he gave, she's giving you guys enough room. Hallelujah. Expect waiting. You have to make a time for that. Hey, this weekend, hey, Alexis, prom, hey. She really make a time. And she will not leave you. Alexis will not let go of you. She will get whatever she needed within that time. And she got it. She had everything. Hey, Alexis. Hey. It's now that I have seen what Pastor always say about her. Alexis. Oh, my goodness. Hey. She made a time for everything. Her mommy has to take off. Abna of all. She has to take off. Driving back and forth. He, Alex will not give her a chance. No. Because she made a time. She had what she, her heart desired. Even human beings. We can fulfill this. How much more? God. Who is good and there's no evil. If you make time for him, you will receive everything that you went before him for. He is not a man to lie. So in waiting, you have to have a purpose. You have to have what? Expectation. And you have to make a time. Hallelujah. And then... You have to learn to relax and rest. Hallelujah. Some people are sitting down here in their chair, but we are not relaxed. We are sitting on something. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are sitting on something. You know, last Saturday, was it Wednesday, we came to church and uh, uh, one of our teachers always, we have the evening service with her. And uh, she has to go pick her child, her son at 7 30 to this because they went for field trip and i got to hear the information that she was communicating with her husband and she said 7 30 i said okay so we came and were leading the i mean praises i mean worship and then whilst i was singing i was looking at the time all oh, the song i was singing is 7 20 7.25, it takes about seven minutes to the school. So I was just calculating. And then she has, she was just singing. And, and I was like singing and I was doing like this. And then she woke me up. I was staring at time. I, I was so, I wasn't relaxed. I wasn't singing, honestly. I was just standing there opening my mouth. But all my mind was on her. And she was like, leave me alone. And she was, and she was relaxed, and I wasn't. You see, in waiting, we got to learn how to relax. He said, come unto me with all your burden, and I will give you rest. We have baggages, burdens. We have things that bring our pressure high. Some of them bring it low. We have so many things going on in our the life around us. And for that matter, even when we are on our bed sleeping, a big bed with a huge mattress with a very comfy uh, comforter, we have everything with whatever, whatever, but still we are not relaxed. We are not. Hallelujah. We are not relaxed. But to God be the glory. God knows that relaxing is our problem. Hallelujah. So when you come before him in waiting, he will teach you how to relax. That's what we learn. Hallelujah. We learn it. He will teach you and you will know. 
You will not only, only relax, but you will rest. Hallelujah. We need this. We need it. People pay money to learn how to relax. But as for him, he doesn't take anything from us. But he will teach us. Why? Because the burden that is so much on us that we cannot relax. When we come before him in waiting, he takes it away. Hallelujah. He knows how to take it. And even if the burden is there, he knows how to tell you where to sit the burden. He will tell you, sit this thing here. For an appointed time, I will take it. Hallelujah. Then you will not carry your burden anymore. Tell the story. You have a story to tell. We all have a story to tell. Hallelujah. So this week is the practical week. Hallelujah. This Easter is the practical Easter. We are going to wait before the Lord on Friday. Waiting. We don't have much time. But we're going to give that one day to God. And I bet you, and I promise you, if you can make it, the Lord will surprise you. Hallelujah. He will surprise you. Because your story has come to a point, you are at a standstill. But the story has to come to a point that you conclude it so you'll be able to tell it. But once you are standstill, you can't because it's not matured yet. But if we, this coming Easter, this week, hallelujah, this week we're going to know the end of it. We will know and understand. Hallelujah. You will know and you will understand. You understand why you are at a standstill. Hallelujah. So that when you are telling the story, you don't say it as you are standing, but you tell the end of your standing. Hallelujah. Waiting. Hmm. Waiting. And then Saturday, we serve family time, right? Saturday is family time. What does family do? They do what? Get together and what? Have fun. How? Relax and, and rest and, and enjoy and, and eat. Okay, good job. Me, my family, when we come together, we tell story. <laughs> Hallelujah. My nieces and nephews, when they go to their moms and then she says, oh, I don't remember, they will come to me because as for me, I remember everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will tell them, kudu, 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 everything. We tell stories. So when we come to family, we're going to tell our children's story. Why are you here? Why are you sitting? Why are you in work performance? Why? Why do you pull your children? Sometimes you pull them and they come, they don't want to come, and you have to force them, pull, and pull. sometimes you have to bribe them. Oh, I do that too. And when I'm tired of bribing, I sit them down and I tell them story. We're going to tell them. He said, a Pharaoh came who did not know Joseph. And he did harm to the people of Israel. Why didn't that Pharaoh know Joseph? Joseph was one time a prime minister in Egypt. Why didn't he know him? Because they stopped telling the story. So he came on, he didn't know. He did all he did to destroy his country. Hey, hey man, didn't know the people of Jews. Haman was an Amalekite, an Amalekite trying to oppress the Jews. Haman, Haman, right? 
Haman didn't know the story. But when his plot turned against him, then his wife said, hey, 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 Naaman, hold on. If this, if you really, did you really, really say you plot to kill Mordecai the Jew? Hey, hey, man. So having two heads, nobody stand against the Jew and succeed. I believe if she had told him earlier, he wouldn't have gone that far. But true, that was his last time talking with his wife. Before he made up his mind, the king said, him, bring him. We are going to Queen Esther's banquet. And that was where he had his life sentence. You have a story to tell your children. We have the story to tell the next generation. Hallelujah. And Saturday, we're going to do that. Are you ready to do that? We're going to do that. By the fireside, we'll be eating. We'll be laughing, we'll be smiling, we'll be telling stories. Yes. I tell stories about you guys a lot. Yeah, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm, I do. Yes, I tell. I tell story. I tell story about you guys. All of you. In a way. You got to. Why? If you don't tell your children, someone will tell them. And they won't say the way you will say. They won't say the truth. And they can inherit the blessing that God has pronounced on them. We have a story to tell. Hallelujah. Jesus' story brought salvation to us. We were one time in bondage. We were oppressed. We were Gentiles. That we were not even able to call the name God. Because he wasn't our God. But Jesus said, I have come to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. That God has accepted both Jews and Gentiles together. They have an inheritance in him. And the proof of the acceptable year was his life on the cross and his resurrection to life and his ascension to the Father. Hallelujah. Waiting. You have tried to climb the mountain by yourself, but the mountain is too tall to climb. The valley is just too wide. But when you learn how to kneel before him, he will teach you how to stand up and he will carry you through. Hallelujah. Make a time. It's not a long time. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. When we come here next week, huh, you must have a cause to see jubilate. Because when you go before the Lord, so many things were answered. I, will, I called pastor. I was talking to pastor. I talked to him. I said, pastor, that sears the Lord. Pa, 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 pa. He said, oh, my goodness. Thank you very much. I said, thank God. Why? I saw things were not good. So I went to him. I said, Father, tell me the end from the beginning. And he laid it. And I said, thank you. We are just walking into it. Because, <laughs> hallelujah. When God, when you meet him, there he will tell you the mountain before you. How? To go about it. Then he explained to you the victory. 
that you have won and how to jubilate. You have a story to tell. Hallelujah. I have, you have, we all have, and that is our ministry. And he's going to turn your sorrow into dancing. He's going to turn your shame into fame. Your vulnerable, that is what is going to establish you. Hallelujah. We are not going to Hollywood, but the Hollywood will come to us. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, they will come to you. They will come to you. Because they'll say, there is something about you. Like, there is, the, have you seen that guy over there? There is something about him. Mm-hmm. That's your story. Praise the Lord. It's my prayer that we make time. Make time. Make time. This Friday, make time. We want to meet with God. Make time. And God will relax you and will give you rest. Hallelujah. May God bless you. May he navigate your way for you. May this week bring you a week of determination and a week of purpose. And may your heart desire, even as Jesus resurrect from the dead, may you have a new life. May you see from the spirit. And may you be able to open your mouth and speak it out. For out of your belly is given life. And life in abundance. May the Lord help you and bless you. Amen.